Hello, this is Eric. Today we're going to talk about a question that I get asked a lot. And it doesn't really matter what addiction we're talking about. We could be talking about alcohol or drug addiction, sex addiction, compulsive gambling, work addiction, overeating, undereating, and codependency, fixing others. So how do we know when we just have a drinking problem or a lust problem or maybe just working too much at work um, versus an actual addiction? And many of us who actually ended up with addiction wanted to look at it as, well, no, I'm in control. It's fine. I can stop anytime. And, you know, we may also have been in denial, but here are some things that I think as a therapist that I think are really helpful. So, for example, we're going to use, uh, what should we use? Well, let's do this a couple of different ways. Let's do this for sex addiction. So, on one hand, we have We'll just call this lust. And over here, we'll call it sex addiction. Okay. So there's a lot of elements that look similar. With lust, we have unwanted behaviors. have unwanted behaviors here too. We may have control problems. We, we have a hard time controlling. We feel out of control. Yeah, there's a certain sense that, yeah, we can kind of control it, but we might be able to stop occasionally. It may be sporadic. Over here, it could be sporadic as well. A lot of addicts say, well, I can stop, and I've stopped. I've stopped a whole year. So let's talk about what makes addiction and then we'll come back to this. We want to ask ourselves, do family members drink alcohol, overwork? Notice I didn't say drink too much, just it's good to just ask, do they drink alcohol at all? Overwork. Have they used prescription medications addictively? Do they uh, pain pills? Do they overeat? Do they overspend? Are they con well, let's see what other addictions are there? Any other addictions? Do they have their own uh, sexual problems? Hopefully you wouldn't know about that, but if you do, um, then you could you could probably plan on having that this is a sex addiction and we seem to get it from our family of origin, not to blame them, but if someone has diabetes and it just runs in their family, it's important to know these things. Is my family kind of numb? Like, don't feel. It's like the emotional thermostat of the family is set to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And when we think it's warm, <laughs> everybody's kind of shivering and maybe even turning blue, but they kind of go, well, we've always looked good in blue. And it's fine. When we grow up and we have painful experiences or stressful situations, and we discover these other things, sex and spending and all that, all of a sudden it feels like a solution. It feels like the warm, fuzzy friend that we've always been looking for. If the family emotionally had a higher 
emotional temperature, like 72, yeah, you discover sexuality, you discover eating um, and work, you get satisfaction from work, and you may drink a little alcohol, but it's not such a contrast between what you're shivering and then you have this wonderful coat to wear. Now the problem with this wonderful coat is it insulates us from reality, it insulates us from real life. We're not able to really tolerate much uncomfortable, many uncomfortable feelings. And that's how we know this is more an addiction than just a plain old problem with lust or just a plain old problem with spending or drinking a little bit too much. Down here we have um, a control aspect to life that we are controlling. The family's kind of controlling. Everybody kind of has a plan for everybody else's life and they have a plan for how they want things to go. And when that plan doesn't go according to the way they want, they get resentful, they get fearful, they get angry, they, um, they may be even dishonest to try to get their plan the way they want things. And that's uh, definitely how you know it's much more an addiction. With addiction, we have a sense of, of pride where we can't admit any problems. So we really, if you ask an alcoholic, hey, do you think you might have a problem with drinking? They're gonna go, no, absolutely not. In fact, therapists won't ask it that way. They say, do you drink? Oh yeah, and how much? They'll invariably tell you how little they drink. It's the strangest phenomena. They won't say, oh, I drink three or four times a week. They will say, you know, I never drink more enough to get drunk. I never drink in the morning. I don't drink that much. Yeah, just kind of how these things are. There's this, this problem with um, minimizing problems. It, it's kind of a shameful experience, which then it goes shameless where I can't admit to any problems. Over here, there's humility. You know, there's a sense of, well, of course I have a problem. You can talk about the problem. Here you really can't talk about it, and I'm gonna erase some of these here. With this, there's a don't talk. Don't feel. Don't trust. So these three rules we get from Claudia Black, who's an expert in family, families of alcoholism, and it really applies to any dysfunctional family that we don't talk about the problem. In fact, we don't talk about anything that would cause us to feel upset. So everybody might walk on eggshells. There's a certain over-controlledness to this, and then everybody stuffs their feelings and how do you stuff them effectively? With food, with spending, with sex, with gambling. That if we felt our feelings and dealt with our feelings, we wouldn't use these things. It's a lot more to that, but that's part of it. So then we don't really trust people as much as we could. We don't trust God like we should. And we trust ourselves to fix everything, which is a big mistake. And the addiction becomes the trusted source of comfort. So for sex addiction versus lust, there is a sense that this is now becoming what appears to be a solution. The word addictum means to the dictator. And so the addiction begins to run the person's life without them even knowing it. And that, how insidious is that is. So there's an aspect of denial. There's a cute phrase, I don't know how accurate it is, but it says, don't even know I am lying. It doesn't really totally work with the acronym there, but there is this sense it's an unawareness that there is a problem. With this, there's much more of a talking about things. 
being able to feel things, to be able to trust. And it's really not becoming centralized in the person's life. There's over here, there's not a family system that has any kind of addictive processes in it. That um, there's a lot of warmth and connection, a lot of affection. You may have heard the phrase, hugs, not drugs. It's, it's true. If people find other ways to be comforted, they're not, they don't need the addiction in their life. You know? So hopefully this will help you sort out if you have more of a sex addiction. Other aspects of sex addiction to consider is the severity of the behaviors. If you're doing behaviors that are contrary to your value system um, and you continue to do it even though you know there's consequences, uh, we'd say there's an out of control state. There's a sense that it's progressing. It's getting worse. Now, not every sex addiction or any other addiction that's a problem always progresses, but there is a sense that there's pro progressing because there's a tolerance built up that you're not getting the same high from the behavior. So if it's gambling, you need to spend more money. If it's sex, you have to do something more naughty or something more disturbing. Over here, these things may disturb us, but if we're just shooing them away trying to focus our attention on things that are good. There's a sense that we can stay away from it. And it's like over here, it's just kind of a habit. But it's a fine line. You know, people can live over, think they're over here when they've been over here for years. So that's why I put this video together to try to help people um, figure out where things are. are. With any addiction, there's a big honesty problem. I guess we'll write it this way. Another way to write it is we can't be honest, that we lie, that there is a constant need to make up reality. And over here, we're more likely to confess it, tell people about it. Over here, there's a sense of shame Shame is different than guilt. Guilt, we may feel guilty over here. Guilt is about behavior. It says, how could I have done this? Shame is how could I have done this? There's a sense of this is not who I am. This is not who I want to be as a person. And so we, it's the shame that actually drives us to do it again. And it's the shame that causes us to be able to not even talk about it. And there's healthy shame. Healthy shame, basically, and hardly anybody talks about it, but healthy shame says that we're not God. That we are human beings that can make mistakes and do make mistakes. Toxic shame is what we're talking about, where I'm too bad, like I am the epitome of badness. And that's why I can't talk about this because I'm the only one who's done this. Reality is lots of people may have this problem and they get better and they go to groups, they start to read literature, they start to do steps and they get better. Same thing with alcoholism that over here a problem drinker may feel guilty. Um, I'd almost say that, yeah, a problem drinker may feel guilty, but it really hasn't been a full-blown addiction. I'd say if there was, you know, the, the major elements is I would look at, am I numbing myself? Am I fooling myself? Is this really harming others? and I've made promises to stop, but I just can't stop, then that's probably where it's a problem. I, I talked to an expert in the field and was interesting. He says that if you talk to an addict and you just ask them, you know, how do you know whether it's this or this? And they said, well, and if you ask an addict who struggles, can you imagine giving this up? 
he says within a split second there's like a fear on their face that they cover up like there's a deep sense that they can't stop well as we know those in recovery there's a great solution this is a, this a it of course we can't stop that's why we would admit powerlessness and ask god to heal us we're over here there's not that that sense of that so anyway i wish you a great day in recovery take care